Weighting schemes for stock indexes include price weighting, market capitalization weighting, equal weighting, and fundamental weighting. A price-weighted index is simply an arithmetic average of the prices of the securities included in the index. Like what we did in the last lesson, we simply sum up all the market prices and divide it by the number of securities. This gives us an index value of 376 points. The advantage is that its computation is simple. To replicate the returns of a price-weighted index, a portfolio manager just needs to maintain an equal number of shares in each of the constituent stocks. The portfolio will have identical returns to the index, not considering dividends received and fees and commissions paid. Note, however, that certain market actions like stock splits can affect the price of a stock. For example, if ABC stock has a two-for-one split, the price for each share will be adjusted to $75. Most index providers will adjust the denominator of the index such that the index value is unaffected by such changes. We want to maintain the index value at 376 points as before the split, so solving for the denominator, we get 2.8 as the new denominator after the split. So from this point on, the index shall use 2.8 as the denominator until another stock split occurs. Note, however, that the weight of the stock has been reduced in spite of the adjustment. This is a disadvantage of price-weighting schemes as actions like stock splits, stock dividends and stock repurchase affect the prices of the affected stocks and shifts the weight distribution of the entire index as a result. The most well-known price-weighted index is the Dow Jones Industrial Average, which is based on the prices of 30 US stocks. Another disadvantage is that higher priced stocks have more weight, but the price of a stock has no indication of how large a company actually is. Take for example the number of outstanding shares each company has. If we calculate the market capitalization of each stock, we find that WTR Incorporated actually is the smallest company and probably doesn't deserve the high weightage that it carries in a price weighted index. A market capitalization weighting scheme does not have such a problem. A market cap weighted index has weights based on the market cap of each stock, as a proportion of the total market cap of all the stocks in the index. The index is calculated by summing the market cap of all the stocks in the index and dividing by a similar sum calculated during the selected base period. The ratio is then multiplied by the index's base value which is typically 100. So, for example, if the base year total market cap for this index is $250,000 and the base year index value is 100, apply this formula and we get an index value of 129.2. One benefit of a market cap weighted index is that it does not need to be adjusted when a stock splits or pays a stock dividend. This is because the market cap of a stock is not affected by stock splits or stock dividends. To replicate the returns of a market cap weighted index, a portfolio manager should match the value of each security position to its market cap weight in the index. This weighting method more closely represents changes in aggregate investor wealth in the entire market than price weighting. This strategy, however, can have some adverse effects in that the relative impact of a stock's return on the index increases as its price rises and decreases as its price falls. This means that stocks that are possibly overvalued are given disproportionately high weights in the index. This is similar to following a momentum strategy under which the most successful stocks are given the greatest weights and poor performing stocks are underweighted. However, one issue with market cap weighting is that not all the outstanding shares are available to market investors. For this reason, some index providers use the float-adjusted market cap weighting instead. Typically, a firm's market float is the number of the shares that are actually available to the investing public and excludes the shares held by controlling stockholders because they are unlikely to sell their shares. Shares held by large corporations or governments are often excluded as well. 
Some indexes are designed to represent the investment opportunities of global investors, so they also exclude shares that are not available to foreign investors. Such indexes may be referred to as free float adjusted market capitalization weighted indexes. <laughs> what a mouthful! Let's put this aside and make some calculations for a simple float adjusted market cap index. If we multiply the number of floating shares by the market price, we get the market float for each stock. We can observe that the weight distribution has shifted after adjusting for market float. XYZ Corp has the highest weight in this index. The reason for float adjustment is to better match the index weights to the market value actually available to market investors. The S&P 500 index is an example of a float adjusted market cap weighted index. An equal weighted index is calculated as the arithmetic average return of the index stocks. Note that it is the return of each stock and not the price as used in a price weighted index. The method for calculating the index value is simple. If these are the prices of the stocks on the base period where the index value is 100, calculate the holding period return for each of the stocks and the arithmetic average of the returns is the return of the index for this period. Increase the index value by this amount and you get the current index value which is 132 points. As with a price weighted index, an advantage of an equal weighted index is its simplicity. To replicate the returns of an equal weighted index for a given time period, a portfolio manager would need to invest equal dollar amounts in each index stock such that the weight of each stock is equal. So for example, if the portfolio has $30 million to invest for this period, he would place $10 million in each stock on the base period. With that amount, he buys the following number of shares and the weight of each stock in his portfolio is an equal 33.33% each. Fast forward to today, his portfolio would have grown 32%, matching that of the index. However, due to the change in prices of the stocks, you notice that the weights of each stock is no longer equal. This is the complication with replicating the returns on an equal weighted index. Portfolio managers need to adjust the portfolio periodically so that the values of all security positions are made equal each period. This is known as portfolio rebalancing, which we'll discuss later. Similar to price weighted indexes, Equal weighted indexes can have weights that are disproportionate to the size of the firm. The weight of smaller capitalization firms can be greater than larger capitalization firms. The value line composite average is a well-known example of an equal weighted index. An index that uses fundamental weighting uses weights based on firm fundamentals such as earnings, dividends or cash flow. The weights can be based on a single measure or some combination of these measures. For example, if this index is weighted by the earnings of the firm as a proportion of the total earnings of all the constituent stocks, the weights assigned to each stock will be as follows. To replicate the returns of the index, a portfolio manager should match the value of each security position to its weight in the index, like that of a market cap weighted index. However, in contrast to the market cap index weights, these weights are unaffected by the share prices of the index stocks. This means that it avoids the bias that market cap indexes have toward the performance of the shares of overvalued firms. A fundamental weighted index will actually have a value tilt over weighting firms with high value metrics such as its earnings and dividends. Contrast this with a market cap index which has a momentum effect where firms with high market cap are overweighted. You're watching an excerpt from our comprehensive animation library. For more videos like these, head on down to prepnuggets.com. At Prep Nuggets, let us do the hard work for you.